subscribe tag tv youtube channel and press the notification button people have to live in in unity we are still in transition civil society has been decimated of course we rely on media and i think the government has not done enough the international community has failed to respond no place in the world is perfect the yoga event is held here severe injustice and they should be stopped we should raise our voices condemn this uh, brutal act Hello you us I'm your host Uzma Jafri with another episode of South Asia Focus let's begin the show India and the United States held third 2 plus 2 dialogue in New Delhi where both sides reiterated their commitment to bolster cooperation at multiple levels the two sides have not only been pushing for a stronger relationship between them but seek a safe indo-pacific a region that has increasingly been bullied by communist party led China While US condemned China's transgression at India's Ladakh and other borders, it also signed pact allowing New Delhi to use its technology in enhancing its surveillance and battle capabilities. The visit of US Secretary of State Mike Pompeo and Defense Secretary Mark Esper for third 2 plus 2 dialogue between India and the US was not just to discuss trade and defense this time. But it was principally focused at committing to launch an integrated campaign against Chinese bullying and transgression in the region. The United States, which has condemned Beijing for its alleged complicity in the spread of coronavirus across the world, took on its ruling party CCP's expansionist agenda. Pompeo called out China's blatant disregard for the laws and its stepped-up efforts at challenging other sovereignty. our leaders and our citizens see with increasing clarity that the CCP is no friend to democracy, the rule of law, transparency, nor to freedom of navigation, the foundation of a free and open and prosperous Indo-Pacific. I'm glad to say that the United States and India are taking steps to strengthen our cooperation against all manner of threats and not just those posed by the Chinese Communist Party. The two nations also inked five pacts including the Basic Exchange and Cooperation Agreement BECA for greater geospatial information sharing between the armed forces of the two countries. This is the third defense pact signed between India and the US in the past 4 years. and it will enable india to use us geospatial intelligence and satellite imagery to improve the accuracy of missiles and drones fifteen years after the conclusion of the first us india defense framework the defense ties between our two nations remain a key pillar of our overall bilateral relationship Based on our shared values and common interests, we stand shoulder to shoulder in support of a free and open Indo-Pacific for all, particularly in light of increasing aggression and destabilizing activities by China. Indo-US defense has touched remarkable heights in the past few years with Washington finding a better strategic partner in New Delhi. after it was compelled to abandon pakistan owing to its sustained support to terrorism and growing ties with china in a span of past 3 years the us has supported indian entry to missile technology control regime 
two countries have also signed communications, compatibility and security agreement COMCASA, which was in pipeline for 10 years. Industrial Security Agreement ISA was signed in the last 2 plus 2 dialogue which facilitates close technology transfer with the Indian private industry. It won't be an overstatement if the ties between two countries are labelled all-time high. Signing the Beka today, after signing the Lemoa in 2016 and Comcasa in 2018 is a significant achievement. Today, the common principle which brings together both the US and India is the democratic values they share with each other. Both have been comfortable dealing with each other owing to the honesty and transparency in their systems. It is these beliefs that have laid the foundation of around $150 billion trade between the two. Defence alone has grown from 200 million US dollars to 18 billion dollars in the past two decades. The two countries are now looking to comprehensively deepen their ties so that trade reliance on China can be minimized and a rule-based order can be established in the region. America's agenda is clear. China will have to pay for the multiple wrongs it has committed against humanity and the US itself. Americans say from coronavirus pandemic to trade war, China has time and again hurt American people and their interests. US secretaries who were on South Asian tour also visited the island nation Sri Lanka and the Maldives to call out unilaterally favorable ties of China that posed a threat to the sovereignty of both the countries. The US has launched an anti-China political offensive. The objective is clear, to minimize the influence China enjoys in smaller countries owing to its deeper economic pockets and to prepare a counter to Beijing's arm-twisting tactics to gain more political and geographical control in the region. After declaring an alliance with New Delhi against growing Chinese bullying in the Indo-Pacific, Mike Pompeo reiterated Washington's commitment in Sri Lankan capital Colombo of working towards a free Indo-Pacific. He called out Chinese expansionist tactics hinting at the Hambantota port, which will be under Chinese control for almost a century. Pompeo said that China had tactically coerced smaller countries into signing bad deals. Indeed, a strong, sovereign Sri Lanka is a powerful and strategic partner for the United States on the world stage. It can be a beacon for a free and open Indo-Pacific. Look, that's quite a con contrast to what China seeks. Uh, we, we see from bad deals, violations of sovereignty and lawlessness on land and sea that the Chinese Communist Party is a predator. And the United States comes in a different way. We come as a friend and as a partner. Pompeo said that China had brought lawlessness to the Maldives and Sri Lanka as he declared that Washington will be opening an embassy in the Maldives for the first time. Beijing has raised objection over the statements, postures, and decisions of Washington. A few days back, it had accused the US of creating a breeding ground for a Cold War. The United States has become proactive after Quad. A major alliance between four major powers has decided to take on Beijing. And this has come in the wake of China trying to grab territories of almost all the countries in its neighborhood. In the Indo-Pacific region alone, Beijing is at loggerheads with as many as 17 countries.
it has made illegal territorial claims against seven sovereign states. However, it has been called out and challenged by all, including the smaller states like Vietnam. The country's PLA has been suffered successive setbacks at Indian border, with Indian Army handing it defeat at multiple strategic points in the past couple of months. If there is a land on earth where not even a handful of people are happy, it is Pakistan-occupied Kashmir. From primary school students to the so-called government employees, everybody is going through one or the other form of state-manufactured crisis. While education doesn't find considerable space in the region's policies, unemployment and poverty is widespread. Today, we take you to Muzaffarabad, where IT instructors who are responsible for making students tech savvy are protesting against the government for not receiving their salaries for 18 months. Have a look. This group of men and women is on indefinite strike against the administration in illegally occupied POK. They are school and college IT instructors who will continue to hold peaceful demonstrations until their pending salaries for 18 months are paid to them. With an aim to impart digital education to students and to make them tech savvy, the so-called government of the region in 2018 had appointed nearly 450 instructors in schools and colleges across the region. Youths were lured into applying for the job in the name of permanent government positions and lucrative incentives. But the protesters say they were betrayed in just six months of their appointment when they were not only told that they were appointed contractually, but were also shown a letter stating the completion of their term. After days of sustained protests, the government renewed their contracts, but only to harass them more. 18 months have passed, their salaries are on hold. They want it back. موسیقی अब तकरीबन छः महीने जब हमारी एक्सटेंशन खत्म हो गई तो उसके बाद 18 महीने हमारी सैलरीज को रोक दिया गया अब ये जो यूरोक्रेट्स वगैरह जितने भी लोग हैं या वजी अजम साहब हमें ये बताएं कि अगर इनको एक महीने की सैलरीज नहीं मिलती तो इनको कितनी मुश्किल होती है लेकिन हमने 18 महीने किस तरह गुजारा किया होगा The issue of withholding salary is not just limited to one department or one set of people, but it is pervasive across the government institutions in POK. From teachers to construction workers, from clerks to college professors, everybody can be seen protesting against the government at one point or another. While most of them protest against the non-payment of salaries, many others have been demanding elevation of their status of employment from contractual to permanent. But the authorities who work fundamentally at the whims and fancies of Islamabad and not as per the legal framework have turned a blind eye to their demands. अब जो हैं स्कूल भी खुल चुके हैं, तीन महीने भी गुजर चुके हैं, ना तो अभी तक वो कोमन ने इसपे कोई पॉलिसी बना सकी है, और नहीं वो कोमत हमें एक्सटेंशन दे सकी है, 30 जून 2020 से हमारी एक्सटेंशन भी खत्म है, तो उसके बावजूद भी वो कोमन ने अभी तक जो स्कूलों में बच्चे पढ़ रहे हैं, सिर्फ जब भी उनके पास जाओ डेट पे डेट डेट पे डेट दे रहे होते हैं 
कोई मामला नहीं समझ आ रही है हुकूमत क्या कह रही है एक तरफ से हमें आई हमें कहते हैं कि आप आई के एम्प्लाई हैं आई वाले कहते हैं आपको एजुकेशन के हवाले कर दिया है तो मेरा हुकूमत से मुतालबा है वजी अजम साहब से हम पहले भी दो तीन बार मिल चुके हैं उन्होंने हमें यकीन दानी कराई थी बल्कि हमने रिटर्न फार्म से उनसे लिखवाया भी था उन्होंने कहा था जी आपका काम विद इन टू वीक्स हो जाएगा लेकिन वो टी टू वीक्स की जगह आप एक महीना गुजरने के हो गया लेकिन अभी तक हमारा काम नहीं हुआ While there has been a repeated chest thumping by Pakistani Prime Minister Imran Khan who boasts of doing remarkable things for people of Kashmir the reality is rotting in sharp contrast to his claims Discrimination is widespread and development is absent in POK human rights are violated with impunity and arbitrary arrest are an everyday phenomenon people do have a right to protest but their voice is muzzled with brute high handedness if the authorities find their dissent even remotely threatening to their rule moving on a large number of people in bangladesh and pakistan have taken to streets against what they call an insult to islam by french president emmanuel macron While carrying out demonstrations they urged traders and commoners to boycott french products people also urged their governments to cut all ties with france these protests have erupted in the wake of macron's statement saying that islam was in crisis and it needed enlightenment <laughs> Protesters in Bangladesh bombed an effigy of French President Emmanuel Macron in capital Dhaka as anger surged over his comments on the row that started with the caricatures of Prophet Muhammad in France. <laughs> Hundreds of them held anti-France banners and chanted slogans against President Macron outside Baitul Mukarram National Mosque. The caricature and freedom of speech row had resulted in the killing of a civics professor, Samuel Patti, by an Islamist, triggering anger across France. President Macron had then come out in support of the victim and had committed a crackdown on Islamist separatists, who, according to him, are destroying the secular fabric and the libertarian essence of the country. People in Bangladesh have demanded the closure of the French embassy in the capital and have issued threats of consequences if caricature publication wasn't stopped immediately. Meanwhile, a trade association in Pakistan city Lahore burnt the French flag and chanted slogans against the prophet's images, which they say are blasphemous. They also vowed to boycott French goods. सब को मिलके तमाम जितनी फ्रांस की अशियाएँ पूरे डेढ़ अरब से जायद मुसलमान हैं उसका बाईकाट कर दें हमने कल से ऐलान किया है कि पाकिस्तान में जितने भी ताजर हैं सत्तर अस्सी लाख ताजर जितने भी पूरे मुल्क में वो इनकी तमाम अशिया का बाईकाट करेंगे और उनको बाहर फेंकेंगे उनको तोड़ देंगे उनको ज़ाया कर देंगे और जुमे के जुमे वाले दिन हमने यहाँ पर जुमे की नमाज के बाद हमने ऐलान कर रखा है पूरे पाकिस्तान के ताजरों की जानब से एज ए सदर आल पाकिस्तान अंजमन ताजरान कि हम फ्रांस हम बैसे ही जाएंगे यहाँ से इस्लामाबाद ऑल्सो पास अ नॉन बाइंडिंग रेजोल्यूशन अर्जिंग द गवर्नमेंट टू रिकॉल इट्स एन वॉय फ्रॉम पेरिस इट इज पर्टिन एंड टू मैंशन हेयर दैट दिस रेजोल्यूशन हैज ड्रॉन एम्बेरसमेंट फॉर द गवर्नमेंट ऑफ पाकिस्तान 
as the country hasn't had an envoy in France in the past three months. Pakistani Prime Minister Imran Khan, who followed his close ally and self-proclaimed guardian of Islamic world Richip Tayyip Ardkwan, called Macron's statement deliberate and systematic provocation, while the Islamic world has been fuming over the statement. There are many others who have supported the French president in calling out terrorism and have urged nations to refrain from attacking Macron personally. New Delhi, in an official statement, condemned the language being used by some world leaders to attack President Macron. Prime Minister Narendra Modi also condemned the terrorist attacks in Nice. US President Donald Trump has also come out in support of the French president's resolve to fight Islamic terrorism. Now it remains to be seen where this debate heads, in which Islam, its so-called guardians, gullible followers, and French President Emmanuel Macron are at the center. India, a spiritual country, celebrates the spirit of life through festivals. The expression is a mark of respect to the country's glorious heritage, culture and traditions. There are a number of festivals that are associated with the Hindu mythology and are celebrated with pomp and show across the country. Today we have brought one such festival for you. Durga Puja, a Hindu festival celebrated predominantly in the eastern part of the country, was the cultural highlight of the last week. Have a look. India is a land of colours and festive hues. And Durga Puja is one such festival that is celebrated in the country with great zeal and enthusiasm. It is the ceremonial worship of Hindu goddess Durga, which is one of the grandest festivals. Durga Puja marks the victory of Durga over the evil buffalo demon king Mahishasar. It is believed that during the festival, the goddess descends on earth to rid it of demons and bless her devotees with happiness and prosperity. Every year, it is celebrated with great fervor, but this year, due to the prevailing COVID-19 situation, even though there was certain subtleness in the conviviality of the festival, the devotees celebrated the puja in various unique ways. We cannot go into like into this pandal, so this is very different, and we need to wear mask every time we are entering to any type of puja pandal. There are thermal screening that we need to check whether our temperature is going up or down and we need to sanitize our hands every time. So this puja is all about only different things. Durga Puja is the main festival in West Bengal and other eastern states of the country. Sindur Kela, which means playing with vermilion, is the last day of the celebrations before the immersion of goddess Durga idols in the water bodies after five days of worshipping and festivities. We Sindur Kela, Bengali's biggest festival. विजय दशमी में हम लोग एक जन एक जन को सिंदूर लगाते हैं कि हम लोग हमेशा हम लोग का पति सलामत रहे और हम लोग का घर सब खुशाल रहे तो इसलिए हम लोग ये सिंदूर खेलते हैं और थोड़ा अच्छा भी लगते हैं As per the Hindu scriptures Durga represents power the feminine force which guides and destroys all the evil from the earth The festival is also about the annual visit of Goddess Durga with her children to her ancestral home on earth. As per the belief, the mode of transport chosen by the Goddess for coming to earth indicates the fate of the year. The most blessed mode is on an elephant.
With that, we come to the end of this week's episode. See you next week. Goodbye and take care.